this piece is called title thank you for joining me here I'm using the same color palette as I used in the piece called Dreamcatcher. This is a pour that I did around the same time as a possibility for the collaboration that I participated in with the Little Pouring Art family. And so my color palette is copper as you can see there, orange, dark purple and aqua and I chose white within the collaboration we were uh, able to choose either white or black to go with these other four colors and so it's very interesting because if you end up looking at the results from Dreamcatcher versus the results from Tidal they both have very different outcomes that's one thing that has always fascinated me is I could do multiple paintings from the same paint mixes, exact same paint batches, and get incredibly different results. So let me know in the comments below if you've noticed the same thing with your own pourings or other videos that you've watched other artists do. I'd love to hear from you and what you've noticed. So here I'm just stretching out the puddle that I'm going to be pouring into a little bit and I'm just putting some flow extender around the edges and the corners and I've sped up the footage considerably there just so you can get the idea of what I'm doing but without dragging out the video. So here I'm pouring my ring. So here's a fun fact about me. I'm actually right-handed, but if you've noticed, I typically pour my cups with my left hand. And this is because within the space where I'm able to do many of my paintings, I'm not able to set up a secondary camera to get these really awesome shots where you can see the paint coming out in a location where I can easily pour with my right hand and have you guys get to see it. So I've literally trained myself how to pour my cup with my left hand, which has not been easy because I am not ambidextrous. I am not able to use my left hand for some of the finer detail work as I am with my right hand. Let me know in the comments below or give me a thumbs up if you think that that's pretty cool that I've been able to do that. All right, look at that beautiful pour. This is so pretty, and I'm just giving it a torch right there, sped that film up really quick. And this is normal speed footage, just showing you a close up shot of what this puddle looks like. This is so pretty, and look at all of the cells and that interesting sweeping flow in the middle there. At this point, I'm so excited by how this looks and my fingers are a little bit crossed because as you may know, if you've already begun your painting journey with pouring acrylics, sometimes you see these beautiful cells and they don't always end up holding up as you stretch, even if you stretch really carefully. And speaking of stretching really carefully, look at how slow I am tilting. I'm going to actually let you see most of the tilting footage in real time so that you can really see how slowly, how carefully I am tilting this. And part of this is I just want to walk this down very gently down into the corners. I want to maintain this beautiful sweeping composition and as many of these cells as I possibly can. So after stretching a little bit, just giving it another torch to pop the air bubbles. I do not have silicone in my paints and so the torch is not doing anything to help bring up cell activity because I just don't have any silicone in which the torch would help create that. This is literally torching just for air bubbles. All right, now look at how I walk this paint down very slowly by going back and forth, left and right, very very gently very slowly just walking that paint down because I want to lose as little of those cells as I possibly can and just bringing it back really slowly all right and look at the lines that are starting to emerge in that upper right hand corner wow I'm just astounded at this point with what I see in so many of the different areas and just bringing this back 
I'm carefully taking note of where the weight of my paint is at every moment within this. That's why I'll suddenly change direction seemingly. It's, I'm feeling what the paint is doing, what that weight of that puddle is doing. And that's something that you only can start to understand by actually doing it yourself combined with perhaps hearing somebody like me indicate that that is going on so that you can keep those words in mind but then you're going to have to feel your way through it as you start tilting your own puddles and just get a feel for what those words actually mean and the more you do it the more you paint the more you'll understand because some of the paintings will do different things and that's why you will probably see the same artists tilting in different ways look at that look at the beautiful aqua color up there in that upper left hand corner and that sweeping arch and then coming down into those uh, purple lines and waves it's incredible and then to the lower left there's all those pebbles and cells floating within it it's absolutely beautiful and still just tilting slowly but I have sped up the footage at this point but look at how slow it still looks like I'm tilting and I'm going to be scooping up some of the paint from the table getting ready to touch up these corners Many artists have figured out that if you over tilt the paint to the point that you just naturally cover up these corners from the tilting process itself, that more often than not, the composition that's left on the top of the canvas is not as attractive as what would have been left there if the tilting doesn't take place to that extreme of a level. And this is why you'll see me and a lot of other artists leaving many of the corners still white and then coming back in with either leftovers from the cup or drippings that are down on the table, carefully scooping them up in the spoon and then carefully draping them across the corners. This is why, in, in case you haven't come to understand that yet, And again, scraping along the edges. Always remember to scrape along the edges. And there you actually saw me use the spoon underneath there to help actually maneuver a rotation with the canvas. That can be done as well if you're doing it carefully enough. You, you wanna make sure if you do that, that you have it very securely wedged under your painting, otherwise you could just end up dropping it. So they're scraping those edges. And I will typically come in and re-scrape periodically up to about 45 minutes. Now, look at these close-up details. Unbelievable. I'm so pleased with some of the textures and the lines and the pebbles. There are so many interesting effects. Now you can see those pearl cells starting to pop up in that corner. They continue to develop over some time which of course they do but it's a surprising thing that it happened here because my paint mixtures were much too thick for pearl cells to uh, supposed to be able to emerge and yet they did look at these lines i am amazed and so pleased with all of the different lines the swirls the pebblings and here we go with some displayed results Look at those pearl cells down in the corner, how they developed. I didn't like them at first, but when I saw the finished piece after a while, I realized that it really was a nice addition and they pulled the white of that swirl up in the central section together nicely. So thank you for being here. I'll see you around my channel soon.